All right, so uh, this is uh, the Tyranid project I'm working for, and specifically I wanted to show Trevor, who I'm painting this for, uh, where we are, and talk a bit about how I got there, because this is an existing paint scheme that I, I'm sort of tweaking on his behalf. So, uh, that's, that's the coloration. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit, I'll give a little bit of an overview of what I've done. And uh, then we can look at the process perhaps a little bit. So let's talk a little bit about how I got here. So the, the original the original color scheme started with uh, a white base with Agrax Earth Shade uh, over the top of it. And so I modified the beginnings by using uh, some new war colors paints. And I'm grabbing them, so I apologize for. Uh, yeah. I apologize for the chaos of the video here. All right, so War Colors Warm Gray 1 and 2. Um, and just for argument's sake, let's show you what white looks like next to that. Uh, all right, so uh, Warm Gray 2 which is what I started with, and this is over black, and the only reason I started with a black base coat, um, or start a black primer, excuse me, is because these are all, um, these are all Forge World resin models, and the Army Painter uh, black covers very well, sort of over aggressively, and it provides a better um, surface for painting, I feel, than some of the other primers that I'm using. Um, anyway, let me show you a comparison. So as you can see, Warm Gray 2 is very, very similar to uh, Rack Earth Flesh. And uh, really, they're, they're just warm gray is all they are uh sort of like uh super light tans uh and i went with this i don't like to i just i don't like using white in general um and so i, I figured this was going to provide a little bit more richness to the color so uh warm gray to start uh warm gray two then warm gray one uh done sort of top down with the airbrush um, just to provide uh, a little bit a brighter base uh, in the highlight areas. I don't know how much of a difference that makes, but anyway, that's, that's what I did. Uh, then I did the Agrax Earth Shade. And then I, I have a, a, a technique that I use with the airbrush when I'm using uh, the washes and that is that I will go back uh, so I will slop on the wash uh, you know I, I try to be uh, reasonably good about keeping the wash smooth but you know there's, there's a, a really a, a certain amount of um, sort of muddiness that you're going to get <clears throat> and little drips and what have you that you just can't control uh, with the with those washes. And so I'll go back with the airbrush with the base color and smooth those out, which is what I've done primarily uh, like on the tail. You can see how smooth that is. But the nice thing about it, uh, so I, I, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, 
when I use the airbrush to go over it, I actually mix up a transparent version of the color. So that means that I will take uh, whatever the color is that I'm using, and in this case it would have been uh, warm gray one, uh, the final color, uh, and then I'll mix it about uh, two parts medium to one part paint. And that way I can very carefully build it up over the areas where I want to kind of smooth out that wash and you get a really nice uh, clean effect. And so when that was done, uh, then I went back and I did some highlighting, you know, by brush, uh, again, with the warm gray one, because the, uh, the thin warm gray over uh, the washed area is still a little bit darker than the full strength warm gray and so then you know the final highlights with that and again using uh, a thinned version of it pretty much the same version maybe a little thicker than i used for airbrushing uh, to do the highlights <clears throat> all right and then uh, and then the carapace colors so that is as with the original color scheme is death world forest Um, with a wash of uh, Athonian Camo Shade, which, by the way, if you don't use Athonian Camo Shade over your greens for any time you want to get, like, a natural green, you're really missing out. It's a great wash. Uh, now, in this case, I couldn't really use the airbrush uh, without having to mask off a bunch of things to do it. So this is all just by hand, went back with uh, a thin version of Death World Forest and, and smoothed out the colors. Uh, but I'd also taken more care to make sure that I wasn't getting the same kind of problems with the wash when I did this color than when I did the, uh, the soft portions of the body. Uh, and then I actually used the warm grays to highlight, I need to mix into the uh, Death World Forest to highlight the carapace colors. So I was pretty happy with how that turned out. And both, you know, like an initial highlight and then sort of more edge highlighting. And even, um, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it in here. You know, I even tried to do some, uh, oh, there you go. Kind of almost patterning to the edge highlight, as you sometimes see on uh, Tyranid models. So then uh, I have, I, I took uh, some War Colors Purple Transparent and I used that on his uh, face tentacles, uh, thinned it down a bit and washed it over that. And then I thinned it down even more. And I don't know, again, this is another, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. I thinned it down even more and applied it very lightly to those little stretchy bits. on whatever the hell those things are called. Um, there's a couple of areas that has those. But anyway, they, they got a little bit of the purple treatment. Now, the, uh, the claws are still a little bit of a work in progress. Uh, I went back over all the claws and uh, spikes with the warm gray again. And then I, uh, I've actually been really enjoying using uh, Vallejo Model Wash, uh, their dark brown. 
on cloths. It's, it gives a really natural effect. Uh, and you can just wash it right in, and it also works well with sort of building it up. So if you want a uh, lighter version, you know, towards the, the front and then darker towards the back, you can just sort of, uh, you know, brush it up and get that effect. It takes a little while, um, but it looks pretty good. You can see it on the lower claws there. Um, but I might still touch those a bit. The other interesting thing about using uh, the model wash is that it doesn't dry permanent, completely permanent anyway, uh, which means that if you go back with a brush that's, that's damp and, uh, oh, where is it? There we go. And you work, hello, there we go. And you work it, uh, you can actually brush it off and it's a, a way of doing highlights that's sort of a subtractive process instead of an additive process. And again, you get a, a nice, unique, interesting effect. And the base isn't done yet, so um, that was just sort of an initial color that I was using uh, to experiment. But I'm planning to make the bases uh, wet looking and not, not, not like uh, wet as in uh, watery, but wet as in maybe damp, uh, squishy perhaps, uh, and lots of um, swamp-like plant life. For all of these is the plan anyway. Uh, so for now, what I've done is all of the lictors, so that's the um, uh, death leaper, and then all the leapers have their base coat, so you can kind of see uh, what that warm gray looks like. I mean, I think in the video it's going to end up looking kind of like white. Um, but it's not. It's not white. Uh, and then some of them have already gotten their wash of Agrax Earthshade. Actually, this would be interesting. Let me show you the before and after. These are very similar models. See how very brown that is? And how this is, and you know, it's, again, the, the wash doesn't look bad. Here, let's pull it out just a bit. So you can kind of see the difference there. Uh, anyway, so I got to do right now. I've got to go get the rest of the Agrax Earthshade on all of those guys, uh, and then I'll probably come back when I'm doing the airbrushing. You kind of see what I'm talking about. Um, it's not a it's not a difficult process, but you might want to see it. I'll see you in a bit. So one of the things I discovered was the difference between. Uh, this guy, which was the last model I was able to shade using um, the my old bottle of Agrax Earth Shade, and uh, the more recent. Let me see, is this one? No, not this one. I think I've already covered up all the other ones. Oh no, this one. This one hasn't been. No, that's also from yesterday. Anyway, this is much darker. Uh, the Agrax Earthshade uh, colored the underlying paint much more than the, uh, the new bottles did. So this actually requires a lot more work than the other ones did um, because this one's so much darker. So as you can see, uh, I'm just sort of lightly going over all of the fleshy areas. I'm, I'm focusing on those uh, those areas that I want to highlight the most. I'm trying to stay away from uh, some of this like recess detail in here, for example. But it's okay if I if I get some in there because uh, as long as I don't 
linger on those areas, uh, I'm not going to fill it. And I can always go back with the uh, shade and bring that back out if I need to. So this is almost like just a, a, a highlight airbrush, but it's also sort of um, reducing the contrast uh, as well because it's going to end up lightening up that shade just a little bit, and I'm okay with that. Certain areas, I want to make sure that I lighten up a little bit more like those little areas I was talking about that are going to get the uh, purple on them. But this is all going to get a, a, a brush highlight as well. So this is really just kind of a starting point. And again, it, it smooths out uh, that that wash and in this case it's it's lightening the whole thing up a little bit You could do this all by brush. Um, it would take more time. And again, you'd want to use uh, a nice transparent color to do it. And I think you, it would be harder. <laughs> It'd be a lot harder. All right, I'm gonna go do the rest. So uh, I kind of skipped a step. I didn't show you when I was doing the uh, highlighting by brush with the uh, warm gray, but there's really not much to that. Again, it was essentially using the same color that I mixed up for the airbrush and then just applying it directly uh, with a brush to continue the kind of smoothing out process and, and add some highlights because again with the airbrush there's only so much you can do uh, and so that was just the final final touch of that and at this point now i'm just doing uh, a thin coat or a thinned coat i don't know that it's particularly thin but i thin everything down with a little bit of uh, uh, either Liquitex Airbrush Medium or Matte Medium thin down to about the same consistency as the Airbrush Medium. In this case though, it is the actual Airbrush Medium. Uh, I, I really like the um, sort of semi-gloss smooth finish that I get with the Airbrush Medium, even if I'm going to um, coat it with uh, a matte coat after the fact. It's just that I like working with that smooth, clean coat that I get with the airbrush medium. So although I've been experimenting with the thinned matte medium, I think I'm just gonna go back completely to airbrush medium. But I don't need to show you this whole step because really I'm just painting the color on and there's not that much to it, so. Uh, we can just skip ahead and the next step is applying the wash. So let's do that. Okay, so 
Athonian camo shade wash. And this is a part this is applied pretty liberally. Uh, I don't want it to since I'm not going over this again with the airbrush, I don't want it to pool up too much. But for example, in in these locations, I actually like it to pool in these recesses. That gives you a really nice shadow in there. So you can be, because of the way this, the, this surface kind of pulls the wash into that recess, you don't have to be overly careful. Where you do need to be careful is the, the carapace, because it's just a big smooth surface. You don't want too much on here. So I, I, I'll, this is almost like, um, like just painting it on a little thick. So in there, you want to see it gathering in that location but you don't want to see it getting too thick up here and again where the where the plates meet is a great place for there to be uh, an excess of the wash so I'm gonna hold it you know upside down like this to just sort of help help it gather there and then when you bring it back over it should spread evenly if it's going to spread at all and the plate on the top of the head or I say the plates because there's there's a there's several of them uh, those work pretty much like these so you don't have to be overly careful with it and you like having that uh, that big line between the plates but on the legs the legs you got to be a little bit more careful a little bit more a little bit more just painty spreading it out a little bit more because otherwise see how that's building up right there can you see that right in there I don't want that I don't want to see that area get too dark. So I'm going to bring it over to this side. I can kind of use the use the excess here to fill in this side. And I'll go ahead and just finish that up. and move on to some of the details. So I got a little ahead of myself. Um, I did the fleshy bits with uh, War Colors Transparent Purple, which is really kind of a, a, a reddish purple as opposed to a blue purple. Uh, it's thinned down and then just brushed into uh, onto the, the face tentacles uh, and then I, into the fleshy bits. And that's really, again, I, I, as I mentioned early on, is, is to kind of just give them more of a, a fleshy appearance. Uh, there's going to be some variation between, a little bit of variation actually as I look them over, but some of them are a little bit redder than others. Actually, I think really the it's just the Death Leaper that has a little bit more purpley tentacles. Uh, and then uh, I'm highlighting, edge highlighting the, the carapace. And this is a 50-50 mix of, uh, roughly 50-50 mix of um, Death World Forest, and uh, the warm gray one from War Colors, which is the one that's really close to white, but not quite white. And what I'm doing here is uh, I've got a really fine brush and I'm kind of making, I, 
like almost like dags, uh, where I'm put the brush down and pull back and push the brush down and pull back. And it's going to create kind of a, um, almost like a jagged pattern effect, but it won't be since I mix this down with a little, uh, airbrush medium, it's semi translucent. So the effect isn't too overstated. And this is tough to do. I, I, I hate working <laughs> under the camera because I can never put the piece exactly where I really want it to be. And I'm not always sure whether I'm showing this off as well as I could. Let me look. Yeah, it looks like you can kind of see what I'm doing. So then that gets uh, the sort of leading edges of all of these carapace bits. Uh, I do it on the back of the carapace here, but not the front. On the front, uh, I'll just do some more traditional edge highlighting. You know, again, using like the side of the brush. Uh, and that is just sort of pick out that edge and, and really make it pop. And then, you know, the tips of some of the, the claws that aren't going to be uh, a different color, I guess they're really more like spikes. Those will get it as well. Um, and then the, a little bit of the dagging to this, but I, you know, frankly, I kind of, on this one, I almost like how it kind of has a natural edge highlight on its own so I don't want to screw with that too much but yeah I've got to go do that oh yeah top of the head as well although it looks like I kind of got started on the top of the head yesterday um, you can see that so I'm gonna finish this one up I've actually done all of the other ones so if, if you hadn't noticed I'm actually working on five of these at the same time and uh, so this video, you might notice it like I, I'm not always, I don't always have the same model that I'm holding here. So when I get back, after I finish this, uh, I think we're going to do claws. So we'll talk about that. I actually have uh, an idea for these claws here that's a little bit different from the one I did on Death Leaper, which is perfectly fine. They can, they can be differentiated somewhat. So I'll come back when I'm ready to do that. Okay, uh, here is the plan for the claws. This is Vallejo Model Wash for rust effects. Um, this is the dark rust color. Dark rust. Uh, I've actually been planning to do a review of these things because they are pretty unique. And I know I mentioned them, mentioned them earlier. But I didn't really go into any detail. And uh, what I like about these is, um, well, I did mention that you can use them for sort of some subtractive highlighting effects. But they're just, they're very natural. You know, the, the, uh, the final coloration of these things. It's almost as if you had suspended um, pigment in in water or alcohol or something because it's not a it's not a regular paint medium it's not thick like that whoops uh, and again it you, you can with a little work wash it off so <clears throat> So it's interesting, it's unique. So I'm gonna go over all of the light colored claws or spikes or what have you with this. 
And then, when they're all done, I'm going to go over them again with the dark brown. And this is going to provide a bit of a, uh, a nice shadow. And what I'm going to try and do here is, let's see if you can see this. Yeah, there we go. So start from the tips and then pull it back so that it's going to, it'll still glaze the whole thing and you'll still get a nice blend to it. Uh, but hopefully you're getting an, uh, as much into the base of it as you can. so that it has that dark, rich shadow at the base. And then when that's done, uh, I, I may go back and, especially with this one, this one, the, uh, the claws are fairly dark. I'm gonna go do, um, I'm gonna mix some of the, the rust uh, with a little bit of the uh, warm gray and make a highlight for really just touching the tips of the claws. Mostly the bigger ones, not so much the smaller ones. So like the, the claws on the, on the hand and these two here and then on the tail. And when that's done, it'll look a little bit like that. So, and then in the end, I'm going to go back and do uh, like a three color, three color red on the eyes. I'm going to go over the whole thing on all of them and just double check that I have the colors the way I want them. And then we're going to do the base, but I'm not going to cover the bases in this video because I haven't really figured that out. And I'm going to do all the bases at the same time so that they have some consistency. But as far as the coloration of the, of the lictors and of course this guy, uh, that does about cover it. So I hope this is all in focus. <laughs> I'm putting a lot of, uh, a lot of faith in my camera because I can't really watch what I'm doing. I don't have a, I need to get a big monitor so I can more uh, closely watch the uh, autofocus and the camera. This camera does have a really good autofocus, but you know what? When you get this close, it's really hard to tell. Uh, but that is going to do it for this video. Um, as usual, uh, if you like the video, please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss anything. And if you really like the videos and you want to see more of them and you want to support more videos, then consider going to Patreon and pitching in a couple of bucks. That would be greatly appreciated and perhaps provide me with the means to improve these videos in the future. But that's going to be all for now. Thank you for watching. And I will talk to you later.